The Williams X-Jet, also known as the Flying Pulpit, was a unique aircraft designed for vertical takeoff and landing, VOL. It was a small, lightweight vehicle built by Williams International. The engine used for this aircraft was a modified Williams F-107 turbofan engine. This single-person aircraft was controlled by the pilot's leaning movements and adjustments to engine power. It had impressive capabilities, including the ability to move in any direction, rapid acceleration, hovering, rotating in place, and flying at speeds of up to 60 miles per hour. It could stay airborne for approximately 45 minutes. In the 1980s, the United States Army evaluated the X-Jet. However, it was ultimately determined that helicopters and small unmanned aircraft were more suitable for their needs. Consequently, the development of the X-Jet was discontinued. Williams International had also worked on other VTTOL systems, such as a jet-powered flying belt in 1969 and the WASP-UN, Williams Aerial Systems Platform, in the 1970s. These projects used different versions of the Williams WR-19 turbofan engine. A patent, U.S. Patent 4,447,024, was issued for the Williams X-Jet. Technical information and drawings can be found at the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Flexible glass, a material believed to have been lost since the time of Tiberius Caesar, is an intriguing historical oddity. According to accounts, the inventor of this glass presented a drinking bowl made of it to Tiberius Caesar. When the bowl was tested, it didn't shatter, but instead dented. Remarkably, the inventor easily repaired the dent with a small hammer he had in his toga pocket. However, fearing that this material could devalue precious metals like gold and silver, Tiberius had the inventor executed, supposedly to keep the glassmaking technique a secret. This story has been passed down through history, primarily by two sources, Pliny the Elder and Petronius. Pliny mentioned that the tale of flexible glass was widespread but not well authenticated, Petronius added a more dramatic and satirical touch to the narrative. Isidore of Seville later retold this account, which was eventually included in Pseudo Heraclius's 13th century collection of technical recipes. In the modern era, a different type of flexible glass is used in fiber optic cables. Unlike the historical flexible glass, it cannot be smashed with a hammer. This modern flexible glass is exceptionally pure, with few defects and a pristine surface. Companies like Corning Inc. introduced flexible glass products, such as Willow Glass, based on borosilicate glass in 2012. Shot AG also introduced a similar flexible glass product in 2016. While these contemporary materials share the name flexible glass, they serve very different purposes from the ancient legend of flexible glass presented to Tiberius Caesar. In central Bosnia and Herzegovina, there's an unusual claim that has stirred controversy for years. Since 2005, Samir Osmanagic, a Bosnian-American businessman, has asserted that a cluster of natural hills near Visoko are actually the largest ancient pyramids built by humans. However, this assertion has been widely debunked by scientists. Extensive studies conducted by geologists, archaeologists, and other experts have consistently shown that these hills are entirely natural formations known as flat irons, with no signs of human construction. The European Association of Archaeologists has labeled the so-called Bosnian pyramids as a cruel hoax, and numerous scholars have expressed concerns about the damage being done to genuine archaeological sites in the area. Despite the lack of scientific support, Osmanagic has continued to promote the hills as tourist attractions. These claims have even attracted pseudoscience enthusiasts who consider the site a New Age pilgrimage destination. Osmanagic has transformed one of the hills into an archaeological park, and organized activities like meditation sessions there. This influx of tourists has brought economic benefits to the city of Visoko, which endured significant hardships during the wars of the late 20th century. Osmanagic's claims have been widely discredited by the scientific community. Qualified experts have emphasized that the hills are natural formations, not ancient pyramids. These assertions have been condemned as a cruel hoax, 
and a diversion of resources from protecting genuine archaeological heritage. Critics have accused Osman Najic of promoting pseudoscientific ideas and damaging valuable archaeological sites. Despite the controversy and lack of scientific backing, Osman Najic's claims have attracted tourists and supporters, leading to economic gains for the region. However, the scientific consensus remains clear. The Bosnian pyramids are natural hills, not man-made structures, and the claims surrounding them lack credibility. Joshua Abraham Norton, born in England in the early 19th century, eventually settled in San Francisco, California. Initially, he was a commodities trader and real estate speculator, but he faced financial ruin due to a failed rice market investment during a Chinese famine. In 1859, Norton proclaimed himself Emperor of the United States in a whimsical act. While he had no actual political power, people in San Francisco treated him with respect, and some businesses accepted currency issued in his name. Norton's eccentricity made him a beloved figure in the city, and he received free services and had his image featured on souvenirs. Norton's life took an interesting turn when he declared himself protector of Mexico after Napoleon III invaded Mexico. Despite lacking any formal authority, he issued decrees on various matters, including one that abolished the United States Congress. His actions ranged from visionary, like suggesting the League of Nations, to humorous, like imposing fines for saying Frisco. He also created his own currency, which some restaurants accepted, and he was known for his distinctive attire, often seen inspecting the city's streets and engaging in conversations with residents. Norton even intervened in anti-Chinese rallies in San Francisco. Throughout his reign, Norton engaged in foreign diplomacy, writing letters to foreign leaders including Queen Victoria and Kamehameha V of Hawaii in an attempt to foster relations. In his later years, Norton lived in poverty, and he died suddenly on the streets of San Francisco in 1880. Contrary to rumors, he was not wealthy, and his possessions included only a few dollars, a gold sovereign, and various headgear. His funeral, attended by a diverse crowd, reflected the city's respect and affection for the eccentric Emperor Norton. Today, he is remembered as a unique and beloved figure in San Francisco's history, with various references to him in literature and popular culture. The Ikea effect is a psychological phenomenon where people tend to value objects more if they have put effort into making or assembling them. This effect can lead us to overestimate the worth of things we've worked on ourselves. For example, if you build your own furniture, you might believe it's worth more than a similar pre-assembled piece. This effect can make us willing to pay more for experiences that involve effort, like assembling furniture ourselves even though it might not be the most cost-effective choice. It can also give us an inflated sense of our own abilities and make us see our creations as better than they are. Companies can take advantage of the IKEA effect by charging higher prices for products that customers assemble themselves, making us overlook the fact that we're essentially paying for our own labor. The IKEA effect is similar to the endowment effect, where people value items more if they own them or feel a sense of ownership. However, the IKEA effect specifically requires that a person builds or makes something themselves. This phenomenon occurs because we have a psychological need to feel competent and capable. When we accomplish tasks like assembling furniture, it boosts our self-efficacy, our belief in our own abilities. This sense of accomplishment fulfills a deep psychological need and makes us see the things we've made as more valuable. Effort justification, a type of cognitive dissonance, is also at play here. When we put in a lot of effort, we want to believe it was worth it, so we assign higher value to the end result to justify our hard work. Our natural optimism about ourselves and things associated with us contributes to the IKEA effect. We tend to see ourselves and our creations in a positive light, even when it's not entirely justified. The IKEA effect has implications for consumer choices, as it can lead us to make decisions that aren't truly cost-effective. It can also blind us to the flaws in our own work, hindering our improvement. To avoid falling victim to the IKEA effect, it's important to research products before buying them, considering both cost and quality. 
We should also weigh the value of our time spent on DIY projects against the upfront cost. Seeking a second opinion from someone impartial can help us see our work more objectively. The IKEA effect was named by Michael Norton, Daniel Mochan, and Dan Ariely in their 2012 paper, The IKEA Effect, When Labor Leads to Love. It was initially observed with instant cake mixes in the 1950s, where adding an egg made the process feel more rewarding, highlighting the importance of effort in our perceptions of value. Money, like corporations and governments, can be seen as an entity or egregore. Destroying physical currency, its equivalent of a flag, doesn't weaken it practically. Instead, it often strengthens its value. This paradox might explain money's extraordinary power globally. The context of destruction matters. Disrespecting money by destroying it can be a start, but it's not enough. Currency has value because people recognize it as such. Refusing to use it and convincing others to do the same can create significant changes. Rather than destruction, rejection is a powerful tool. Distance yourself from the currency and promote alternative forms. Spreading doubts about its stability can erode faith in it, paralleling how egregores are weakened by lost belief. Economics plays a role too. Deflating a currency is as harmful as inflation. Steady inflation encourages economic activity and prevents hoarding. Physical destruction disrupts this balance and weakens the currency egregore. Considering cryptocurrencies, which allow defining contracts within them, adds a new layer to this concept. Actions like burning flags might not always weaken the entity they represent, but can become part of the discourse reinforcing it. Both corporations and governments create their own currencies, controlling power and flow. However, there are limits due to economic principles like arbitrage and inflation. These phenomena highlight the complex interplay between belief, value, and systems in both economics and justice. Mushrooms, usually associated with the culinary world, have found a surprising role in the realm of music. This unconventional fusion involves using mushrooms to create unique and intriguing melodies. Imagine a scenario where mushrooms become musical instruments. It may sound bizarre, but it's a reality in the world of experimental music. By employing a biodata sonification module, musicians can connect gourmet mushrooms to synthesizers. These specially designed modules translate the activities and responses of mushrooms into sound, essentially turning them into living components of a musical ensemble. Through this unusual collaboration, the subtle growth patterns, environmental interactions, and even the bioelectricity of mushrooms are transformed into audible notes and rhythms. The result is an organic and otherworldly musical experience that blurs the lines between the botanical and the sonic. This innovative approach to music creation has garnered attention on various online platforms, proving that there's a curious and appreciative audience for this fascinating genre. As these mushroom-based compositions continue to evolve, it's an intriguing exploration of the harmonious possibilities found within the natural world. In the world of computer networking, there's an unusual concept known as IP over avian carriers, or IPOSC for short. This might sound like a joke, and that's because it is. The idea was introduced in a document called RFC 1149, created by D. Waitzman and released on April 1, 1990, as part of an April Fool's Day tradition in the tech world. The basic concept of IPOSC involves using birds, like homing pigeons, to carry internet protocol, IP traffic. Waitzman even suggested improvements in later documents, such as RFC 2549 and RFC 6214. Surprisingly, someone actually attempted to implement IPOS in real life. In April 2001, a group called the Bergen Linux User Group tried it out, sending nine packets of data over a distance of about five kilometers, three miles, with each packet carried by an individual pigeon. The result? They received only four responses, with a packet loss ratio of 55% due to operator error. The response time ranged from 50 to 100 minutes, making it clear that this method suffered from extremely high latency. 
There are some known risks associated with this comical approach, such as carriers being attacked by birds of prey or being blown off course during storms. Some places might not have suitable local carriers, imagine flightless and nocturnal kiwis trying to help. There's also a risk of disease affecting the carriers, and their homing abilities limit the network topologies they can support. Interestingly, people have found other practical uses for pigeons in data transfer. For example, photographers in rafting expeditions have used pigeons to transport digital photos from cameras to tour operators. Over short distances, a single pigeon can carry a substantial amount of data in a relatively short time. In various experiments, pigeons carrying memory cards have outperformed other data transfer methods over short to moderate distances. These amusing tests have shown that sometimes, even the most unconventional ideas can have their moments of success. Closed-eye visions, often considered hallucinations by science, have intrigued many. Communities exist where individuals openly share their experiences and interpretations of these mental journeys. In these unique spaces, people describe seeing a world within their minds when their eyes are shut. They recount encounters with people, places, and things that may be entirely unfamiliar or strangely familiar. It's a realm where the boundaries between reality and imagination blur. Interpretations of these visions vary widely. Some view them as a form of self-reflection, a means to process buried emotions and memories. Others see them as windows into the subconscious, revealing hidden aspects of the mind. What's striking is that some actively engage with these visions, using techniques like meditation or lucid dreaming to navigate their inner landscapes. They believe that within these mental realms lies untapped insight, creativity, and even spiritual growth. While science may classify these experiences as hallucinations, these communities embrace the idea that the human mind holds more mysteries to explore. To them, these inner journeys are a testament to the wonders of human cognition, a canvas where imagination blends with the enigmas of thought. In February 2013, a meteorite crashed in the Urals, sparking intriguing theories. While early speculation pointed to a Russian missile, some suggested a different scenario, a UFO intervention. Russian UFO enthusiasts noted a series of videos showing an object intercepting the meteorite, causing it to explode. While this might sound far-fetched, multiple videos captured this event from different angles, adding to the mystery. Alexander Komenev, a coordinator for the Russian UFO community, pointed out another curious detail. He mentioned an increase in UFO sightings since 2012, with a surge in reports in February just before the meteorite incident. At a press conference, Komenev presented videos depicting strange glowing objects in the sky. Some witnesses described them as glowing bowls that appeared and disappeared, sparking speculation about their connection to the meteorite. However, after the meteorite's fall, UFO activity in the region reportedly ceased. Meanwhile, divers discovered craters in Lake Shabarkal, where meteorite fragments were believed to have sunk. While the idea of a UFO saving the day might remain speculative, the Chelyabinsk meteorite incident added another layer of mystery to the realm of unidentified flying objects and celestial events. The universe, with all its vastness and mysteries, can be a hostile place for our digital technology. At first glance, our computational devices should operate flawlessly, following the precise rules of physics and mathematics. However, when we delve into the microscopic and even sub-microscopic realms of technology, we encounter unforeseen challenges that disrupt the reliability of our digital machines. This issue is not a recent development, but dates back to the 1970s when prominent computer manufacturers began reporting unexpected computational errors. These errors originate from tiny disturbances at the subatomic level, which can wreak havoc on digital systems. One of the key culprits in this cosmic interference is the phenomenon known as a single event upsetter. It's a soft error that doesn't physically damage the device, but can flip a single zero into a one or vice versa. This seemingly minor change can trigger a chain reaction of errors throughout a computer's operations. 
The intriguing part is that these events leave no trace and can be manually corrected. The source of these disruptive particles lies beyond our planet. Charged particles originating from magnetic fields in space, including those generated by black holes and other celestial phenomena, travel through the cosmos. These particles can be deflected and redirected by magnetic fields wandering the universe for billions of years before eventually encountering Earth and our technology. One notable incident occurred in Belgium in 2003 during a voting poll. An inexplicable event led to exactly 4,096 additional votes for a single candidate, a result that could not be accounted for despite repeated recounts. This incident left experts scratching their heads, unable to recreate the error. Another example occurred during a live online stream of the game Super Mario 64, where a player was abruptly warped upward for no apparent reason. Game experts and programmers were baffled, and a substantial reward was offered for anyone who could replicate the anomaly, yet no one has succeeded in doing so to this day. Even the infamous blue screen of death on Windows computers, familiar to many, may have been caused in part by cosmic ray events colliding with our equipment. To mitigate the impact of these cosmic bit value flips, supercomputers now employ neutron detectors and maintain frequent auto-saved backups. These measures help safeguard our digital technology from the unpredictable and often invisible disruptions caused by the vast universe itself. Thotography, also known as projected thermography, is the alleged ability to transfer mental images onto surfaces like photographic film using psychic means. While this phenomenon has been around for a while, it gained popularity with different names over the years. Thotography emerged in the late 19th century, inspired by spirit photography. It's important to note that it's distinct from spiritualism, which separates it from spirit photography. One of the earliest mentions of psychic photography was in a 1896 book by Arthur Brunel Chatwood. He described experiments suggesting that looking at a sensitive plate with images in mind could produce photographs. Hereward Carrington, a psychical researcher, noted that many psychic photos were likely fraudulent due to various manipulation techniques. However, he also believed that some might be genuine. The term thoughtography was introduced in the early 20th century by Tomokichi Fukurai. Skeptics, including professional photographers, often attribute psychic photographs to camera and film flaws, exposure errors, processing mistakes, lens flares, reflections, or chemical reactions. In Japan around 1910, Tomokichi Fukurai conducted experiments with subjects like Chizuko Mifune and Ikuko Nagao claiming they could telepathically imprint images on photo plates, which he called Nensha. However, when journalists found inconsistencies, Nagao's credibility was questioned, and she faced criticism. Albert von Schrenk-Notzing investigated Eva Carrier in the early 20th century. He believed her ectoplasm materializations were the result of ideoplasty, where images formed from her mind onto ectoplasm, Critics, however, found evidence of deception, including magazine cutouts, pins, and string. Ted Sirios, a hotel bellhop, claimed to use psychokinetic powers to create images on Polaroid film in the 1960s. While a psychiatrist endorsed his abilities, professional photographers and skeptics suggested he used sleight of hand. Masuaki Kyoto, a Japanese psychic, was claimed to possess psychokinetic powers. However, investigations found that he could only achieve success when he had control over the film without any oversight for an extended period, casting doubt on his abilities. Yuri Geller, a famous psychic, claimed to create images with a 35mm camera in 1995. Critics suggested he used optical devices or already exposed film to perform the trick. In the realm of technology, there's a curious connection to the world of magic. Historically, scholars have tried to define magic and identify its unique characteristics. These include the use of symbols, gestures, and speech understood only by a select group, the employment of ritual tools, and the belief in harnessing the power of non-human entities to produce effects that seem beyond conventional understanding. 
Interestingly, computer programming shares some of these traits with its esoteric knowledge, arcane symbols, and the ability to make computers perform seemingly intelligent actions. Looking ahead, the magical aspects of technology are set to evolve. Virtual reality, VR, artificial intelligence, AI, and ubiquitous computing, you see, are converging to create digital physical ecosystems and cyber physical societies with a touch of enchantment. VR, for example, immerses users in alternate worlds with unique rules, creating a sense of magic. AI enhances this magic by mediating control over smart systems and even generating code based on human commands. This means we can control complex systems through creativity and will without understanding the technicalities. Moreover, as you see and the Internet of Everything expand, our surroundings could become enchanted cyber-physical systems that respond to our thoughts and desires, deepening the sense of magic in hidden causality, non-human intelligences, and emotional control. However, this new technomancy differs from traditional computer programming in three ways. Firstly, technologies like VR and smart AI aim to hide their existence as tools making them less obvious to users. Second, they blur the line between experts and non-experts, allowing anyone to command enchanted environments. But there's still a place for experts who can manipulate these systems creatively. Lastly, large corporations are driving the development of these magical worlds, creating a new strategic sphere where organizations compete for influence and power. This raises questions about whether traditional management concepts are sufficient to understand these dynamics, or if new interdisciplinary fields like strategic magical practice or organizational technomancy are needed to manage these novel cyber-physical systems and their expert users effectively. In 1924, a little girl had an unusual encounter in Pasco County, Florida. While playing near St. Joseph School, she noticed a glowing egg-shaped object on the ground, so bright that it may have momentarily stunned her. As it dimmed, a saucer-like craft emerged from the egg, and strange beings stepped out. These beings, which the girl described as resembling animated flowers with faces, were small and robotic in nature. They carried what she believed to be a weapon aimed at the school's science building. Despite her small size, she offered to help them with their cargo, but found it too heavy to lift. The robotic entities communicated with her telepathically, expressing concern about experiments in the science building that disturbed them. They warned that they might destroy the place if the work continued, though the nature of the experiments remained unknown to the girl. In a surprising turn of events, one of the robotic beings invited the girl to come with them into their craft. Although tempted, she declined their offer. The entities promised to return in 35 years, a promise that, as far as she knew, went unfulfilled. After their conversation, the robotic flowers re-entered their craft, which then ascended into the sky, becoming silvery bright before disappearing. In the 1970s, attempts to hypnotize the girl to gather more information or determine if she had been abducted were unsuccessful. Intriguingly, she mentioned that the science building had been left in shambles after the encounter, leaving questions about whether the robotic entities made good on their promise or if it was merely a coincidence. The motive behind these robotic flowers' interest in the school's science building remains a mystery, as does the true nature of the experiments conducted there. This unusual encounter raises more questions than answers, leaving us to ponder the intentions of these enigmatic beings. In 2022, a significant experiment took place involving the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, HARP. Researchers successfully bounced a radio signal off an asteroid on December 27th, marking the first time HARP was used for such a purpose. This groundbreaking experiment tested the feasibility of probing asteroids, particularly in preparation for a larger asteroid's close approach to Earth in 2029. The experiment involved HARP transmitting radio signals to asteroid 2010 XC-15, which is estimated to be approximately 500 feet across. The University of New Mexico Long Wavelength Array and the Owens Valley Radio Observatory Long Wavelength Array received the signals. 
the researchers used longer wavelengths to penetrate the interior of the asteroid, aiming to gain insights into its mass distribution. Understanding an asteroid's interior, especially if it's large enough to pose a threat to Earth, is crucial for devising strategies to defend against potential impacts. HARP transmitted a repeating chirping signal to the asteroid, even though it was twice as far from Earth as the Moon. This experiment contributed to our understanding of near-Earth objects and preparedness for the 2029 encounter with asteroid Apophis. Apophis, initially considered a risk to Earth in 2068, passed within 20,000 miles of our planet in 2029. This experiment and the Apophis encounter were of interest to scientists studying near-Earth objects and planetary defense. Understanding asteroids and having advanced warning of potential impacts allows for more options to deflect or mitigate their threat. While smaller asteroids frequently burn up in Earth's atmosphere, larger impacts are rarer and can cause significant damage. This experiment, conducted in 2022 and funded by the National Science Foundation, played a crucial role in advancing our knowledge of near-Earth objects and our preparedness for potential asteroid impacts. In 1911, Kilner conducted early research on the human atmosphere, or aura, suggesting its existence and potential use in medical diagnosis and prognosis. He believed that the human energy field could indicate health and mood, similar to later research by Harold Saxton Burr. Kilner's approach, however, predates modern technology, so he tried to create devices for the naked eye to observe the auric activity, which he thought might be ultraviolet radiation. To train the eyes to perceive this electromagnetic radiation, Kilner used glass slides or Kilner screens treated with colored dyes. The treatment involved substances like deshiannin, a toxic dye used in photography. Kilner claimed long-term viewing through these screens was not recommended due to eye discomfort, but believed that with regular training, one could eventually see the aura without the apparatus. Kilner and his associates reported observing auric formations including the etheric double, inner aura, and outer aura, extending several inches from patients' bodies. His book provided instructions for constructing and using similar devices. However, Kilner's method had drawbacks due to the scarcity and toxicity of the chemicals used. Later, biologist Oscar Bagnall suggested alternative dyes. In 1920, a revised edition of Kilner's book, titled The Human Aura, was published and gained popularity in theosophy circles. Critical reception of Kilner's work was mixed. The British Medical Journal, BMJ, in 1912 questioned the scientific basis of his findings and could not replicate his experiments. They concluded that Kilner's aura was not more real than a visionary image. American religious scholar J. Gordon Melton noted that Kilner's research was largely dismissed by later researchers, attributing his results to optical processes rather than emanations from subjects. Skeptic Joe Nickel categorized Kilner's work as pseudoscience, criticizing his acceptance of non-existent phenomena and clairvoyant powers. A Dyson Sphere is a theoretical megastructure that could encircle a star and capture its energy. It's a concept that explores how advanced civilizations might meet their energy needs when they outgrow their home planet's resources. By building structures around a star, they could harvest much more energy since only a small fraction of a star's energy reaches the planets orbiting it. The idea of a Dyson Sphere was first introduced in Olaf Stapledon's science fiction novel, Star Maker, in 1937. Physicist Freeman Dyson further developed the concept in 1960, suggesting that such structures would be necessary for a civilization's long-term survival as its energy demands increased. Detecting the signature of Dyson spheres around stars could be a sign of extraterrestrial life. Dyson didn't specify how to build such a structure, but he envisioned a system of objects orbiting a star to collect its energy, which he referred to as a shell or biosphere. Later, he clarified that it wouldn't be a solid structure, but rather a swarm of objects orbiting independently, known as a Dyson swarm. The concept of Dyson spheres has sparked scientific interest because they could emit unusual infrared radiation due to the conversion of starlight, potentially indicating the presence of advanced civilizations. 
Scientists have searched for such signatures in space, hoping to identify type the Sektu Kardashev civilizations. While Dyson spheres are theoretically possible, building one around our sun is currently beyond our technological capabilities. The number of craft required exceeds our current industrial capabilities. Some suggest self-replicating robots as a solution. Others propose building Dyson sphere habitats around different types of stars, like white dwarfs or pulsars. A matryoshka brain is a hypothetical megastructure that uses Dyson spheres to create an immense computational capacity. It was proposed by Robert J. Bradbury in 1997 and is a type of stellar engine harnessing the energy output of a star to power massive computer systems. The name matryoshka brain is inspired by Russian matryoshka dolls, which are nested dolls. The concept involves nesting Dyson spheres, similar to the nesting of Matryoshka dolls. The innermost Dyson sphere draws energy directly from the star, generating a lot of waste heat while performing high temperature computations. The surrounding Dyson spheres absorb this waste heat and use it for their computations, each emitting heat at a lower temperature than the previous one. This nesting reduces heat wastage making Matryoshka brains with more Dyson spheres more efficient, but also requiring enormous engineering and resource efforts. The term Matryoshka brain was coined as an alternative to the Jupiter brain concept, which is similar, but on a smaller planetary scale and optimized for minimal signal delay. Matryoshka brains prioritize capacity and energy extraction from the source star, while Jupiter brains focus on computational speed. Possible uses of a matryoshka brain include running perfect simulations or uploads of human minds into virtual reality spaces, manipulating the structure of the universe, simulating entire alternate universes, and exploring the implications of massive scale computing. In fiction, matryoshka brains are featured in various stories and universes, often as processing nodes for super intelligences or central threats in sci-fi narratives. The interdimensional hypothesis suggests that UFO sightings may result from experiences involving separate coexisting dimensions, as opposed to the idea that UFOs come from outer space or are purely psychological or social phenomena. This hypothesis has been proposed by various ufologists, including Mead Lane, John Keel, J. Allen Hinek, and Jacques Vallée. They argue that UFOs could be a modern interpretation of phenomena recorded throughout human history previously explained as mythological or supernatural beings. In the 19th century, spiritualists adapted the concept of other dimensions to explain sightings of flying disks in 1947. The idea of multiple planes of existence was popularized by H.P. Blavatsky and incorporated into the writings of occultists. Mead Lane, an occultist, claimed in 1947 that flying disks were etheric and could transition between different states of matter. He believed these beings were not from Earth, but had good intentions and were experimenting with Earth life. John Keel in the 1970s shifted away from the extraterrestrial hypothesis, suggesting that UFOs might be connected to psychic phenomena. He introduced the term ultraterrestrials to describe non-human entities capable of taking various forms. J. Allen Hynek, an astronomer, played a role in U.S. Air Force UFO studies. Jacques Vallée proposed the idea of interlocking universes and a parallel universe coexisting with our own. He argued against the extraterrestrial origin of UFOs based on various factors. David Grush, a former member of the UAP task force, suggested that UFOs might come from a higher dimensional physical space, offering an alternative explanation to the extraterrestrial hypothesis. In 1931, psychologist Winthrop Niles Kellogg and his wife embarked on an unusual experiment. They brought home a baby chimpanzee, Gua, and raised her alongside their human baby, Donald. Their goal was to study how environment influenced development. Could a chimp raised like a human actually act like one? Kellogg had long dreamed of conducting such an experiment, fascinated by wild children raised without human contact. 
To avoid the ethical issues of abandoning a human child in the wilderness, they chose the reverse scenario, bringing an infant animal into civilization. For nine months, they subjected both babies to identical conditions, conducting numerous scientific experiments covering aspects like blood pressure, memory, reflexes, and more. Surprisingly, Gua initially outperformed Donald in these tests. However, Gua eventually hit a cognitive wall. Despite all efforts, her chimpanzee genetics held her back. The experiment demonstrated the limitations of heredity regardless of environmental opportunities. The experiment ended abruptly in March 1932 when Gua was returned to a primate colony. The reasons remain unclear, but possibilities include exhaustion from non-stop parenting and scientific work, concerns about Gua's increasing strength and unpredictability, or even language differences emerging between Donald and Gua, possibly affecting the study's outcome. Mirage cities are optical illusions that can appear in the distance, often on the horizon, giving the illusion of towering skyscrapers or entire cityscapes floating in the sky. These mirages have puzzled and captivated people for centuries. The key to understanding mirage cities lies in a phenomenon called a superior mirage. This optical illusion occurs when there are alternating layers of warm and cold air near the Earth's surface. When light rays pass through these layers, they can bend and create a distorted image of distant objects. In the case of mirage cities, this bending of light can make objects on the ground, such as buildings, appear much higher in the sky than they actually are. This effect can be so convincing that it gives the impression of an entire city hovering in midair. One famous example of a mirage city is the Fata Morgana. This mirage has been responsible for sightings of ghostly cities, castles, and even ships sailing in the sky. The name Fata Morgana is derived from the Arthurian sorceress Morgan Le Fay, known for her enchantments, reflecting the bewitching nature of these optical illusions. The Fata Morgana mirage occurs when there is a stark temperature difference between the air layers above warm surfaces, like deserts or bodies of water. As light passes through these layers, it bends, creating intricate and often surreal mirages. These mirage cities have sparked various legends and myths throughout history. They have been linked to supernatural occurrences and have even influenced folklore, including stories of ghost ships like the Flying Dutchman. While mirage cities may seem like otherworldly phenomena, they are ultimately products of the natural interactions of light and the Earth's atmosphere. They serve as a captivating reminder of the complex ways in which our perception of reality can be altered by the environment. Conspiracy theorists have made an unusual claim about Antarctica. They believe it may hide the world's oldest pyramids. This theory is rooted in the idea that pyramid-like structures are scattered worldwide, and some suggest that a vaguely pyramid-shaped formation in Antarctica's Shackleton mountain range could be the oldest pyramid on Earth. The theory gained attention on the History Channel's TV series, Ancient Aliens, which explores various extraterrestrial ideas. Some speculate that these pyramids may have been built by ancient aliens or lost civilizations. However, not everyone is convinced. Dr. Michael Sala, an expert in exopolitics, argues that these pyramids, including the one in Antarctica, are part of a global network of power-generating pyramids designed to transmit energy wirelessly. Geologists, on the other hand, explain that these pyramid-like formations are natural geological features known as nunataks. These rocky peaks emerge above glaciers or ice sheets and can have a pyramid shape. They are not human constructions, but rather products of nature. In the end, while the idea of ancient pyramids in Antarctica may be intriguing, the scientific consensus leans toward these formations being natural geological features, not man-made structures. In the search for intelligent life beyond Earth, it's unlikely we'll find creatures like us. Even if life exists elsewhere, it might not develop in the same way it did on Earth. Humans have been around for a relatively short time, but artificial intelligence is progressing rapidly. AI could become smarter than humans, leading to the creation of artificial beings. 
If aliens follow a similar path, they might not be biological like us. They could be electronic or AI-based, possibly existing in places other than planets. This challenges the idea in the Drake Equation, which suggests there are many civilizations out there, most of which are artificial. We may need to think of alien civilizations as integrated intelligences rather than groups of individuals. When searching for signs of these intelligences, we might not find messages we can understand. Instead, we might detect complex technology-related stuff or evidence of advanced tech like Dyson spheres or artificial molecules in atmospheres. It could be worth looking for traces of alien nanotechnology in our solar system. Even if we did get a message from aliens, we wouldn't be able to predict their intentions, which could range from peaceful to expansionist. As time goes on, intelligent species might become incredibly powerful and complex, possibly controlling entire galaxies. Advanced intelligences might create simulations so realistic that we might be living in one, making us question the nature of our reality. Our knowledge of physics and the universe has many unknowns, leaving room for astonishing possibilities. In July 1984, Russian cosmonauts aboard the Salyut 7 space station witnessed a peculiar phenomenon. On day 155 of their mission, they were engulfed in an intense orange light that momentarily blinded them. This light seemed to penetrate the station's walls, leaving the crew puzzled. Amidst the blinding radiance, all the cosmonauts observed the presence of seven angelic figures hovering outside the space station. These beings, described as humanoid in appearance with wings and halos, remained in close proximity to the station for about 10 minutes before disappearing. On day 167, the crew was joined by three more cosmonauts from the Soyuz T-12 spacecraft. Once again, the space station was bathed in a warm orange light, and the crew peered through the portholes to witness the enigmatic angelic beings. These beings were described as the size of an airliner, according to the cosmonauts. The incident was kept classified by the Soviet Union, and the crew was advised not to disclose it publicly. While some may attribute these sightings to fatigue from prolonged space missions, it's noteworthy that multiple crew members reported seeing these smiling angels. This strange encounter occurred as the cosmonauts set a record by spending 237 days aboard the Salyut 7 before eventually leaving the space station. The Japanese tradition of carrying the omakoshi during festivals bears a striking resemblance to the biblical account of King David and the Ark of the Covenant. In the Bible, King David joyously brought the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem, and this event shares common features with the Japanese omakoshi ceremonies. Both the Ark and the omakoshi are carried on the shoulders of individuals using poles. In the case of the Ark, this aligns with the biblical description of how it was carried by the Levites. The use of poles is also similar in the Japanese tradition. The Ark of the Covenant had gold cherubim on its top, while the omakoshi features a gold bird called Ho-Oh, both of which represent celestial beings. Additionally, both the Ark and the omakoshi are adorned with gold, and their sizes are comparable, suggesting a possible connection. During the Ark's procession, King David and the people of Israel sang and danced to the accompaniment of musical instruments, a practice mirrored in Japanese festivals where people sing and dance around the omakoshi. Furthermore, the ritual of carrying the omakoshi across a river during the Gionjinja festival in Kyoto may have origins in the biblical account of the Israelites crossing the Jordan River with the Ark of the Covenant after their exodus from Egypt. In some Japanese communities, the individuals chosen to carry the omikoshi undergo a period of purification and sanctification, including bathing in seawater, which bears similarities to the biblical custom of sanctifying oneself before bringing the Ark of the Lord God of Israel. Lastly, the distribution of food, such as bread, meat, and raisin cakes, after the Ark's entry into Jerusalem aligns with the Japanese tradition of distributing sweets to participants after festivals, providing another intriguing parallel between these two distinct cultural practices. There's also a village in Japan known as Shingo, Aomori, where it's believed that Jesus may have visited during his lost years. 
Some even believe that he may have survived the crucifixion and spent the rest of his life there. Some special black holes, called Kerr-Newman black holes, have a unique feature. They allow for the possibility that things, including living creatures, could exist inside them without being pulled into the center or escaping somewhere else. These black holes are different from the enormous ones found in the centers of galaxies. Inside these special black holes, different types of paths or routes are available for objects. If the black hole is charged but not spinning very fast, charged objects can go around in circles inside it. Even if something doesn't have an electric charge, like most everyday objects, it can follow curved paths inside spinning charged black holes. Even light, which has no weight, can follow these curved paths inside these black holes. In simpler terms, these paths are like circular tracks or highways that keep going in loops. However, living inside a black hole, even if it's possible, would come with strange and challenging situations. Time might not work the way we're used to, and there could be strange effects happening closer to the center of the black hole. But the fact that these paths exist inside black holes is a really interesting part of black hole science. China's sky-eye telescope, known as the 500-meter Aperture Spherical Radio Telescope, FAST, may have detected signals possibly originating from an extraterrestrial civilization. Astronomers from Beijing Normal University reported discovering several instances of unusual narrowband radio signals using FAST. These signals were picked up during deep space scans conducted by FAST in 2020 and 2022. The scientists haven't ruled out the possibility that these signals could be the result of human radio interference. They are cautious about confirming these findings until further analysis is complete. The signals are intriguing because they differ from typical electromagnetic signals and could potentially be linked to alien technology. However, the researchers are taking a thorough approach to confirm or rule out any interference. In the past, radio interference has complicated the search for extraterrestrial life. Chinese astronomers plan to conduct additional observations to conclusively determine the nature of these signals and hope to contribute to the search for extraterrestrial civilizations. The quest for extraterrestrial life remains a significant scientific challenge as the vastness of the universe and its age raise questions about the apparent absence of intelligent life beyond Earth, known as the Fermi Paradox. Researchers have discovered something intriguing about our minds. When we see our real body while also perceiving it in a humanoid robot, it creates a strange illusion. This illusion makes it seem like we exist in two bodies at once. In previous studies, scientists found that when our senses receive coordinated information, our minds can feel like they're outside our physical body. It's almost like having an out-of-body experience. To explore this further, researchers came up with a unique experiment. They used a humanoid robot to duplicate a person's body. First, they let individuals control the robot's movements and see through its eyes. The results were surprising. When people experienced their own bodies through the robot, something strange happened. They felt like they were in two bodies simultaneously. It's similar to a phenomenon called hotoscopy, where you see yourself from a different perspective. In simpler terms, our minds can make us feel like we're in two places at once when we see ourselves in a robot. It's a fascinating quirk of human perception. During the Apollo 8 mission, photographs were taken, but they could only be seen upon returning to Earth and developing them. In these images, an unusual sight was captured, something resembling a squid with long tentacles floating in space, hence the nickname Space Squid. This led to questions about the possibility of creatures surviving in space without oxygen. Some scientists have speculated that prebiotic materials near nebulae or gas clouds might have evolved into life forms known as xeroids over time, adapting to extreme space conditions. However, there's a different perspective. Some believe the space squid may not be a living organism at all, but rather an advanced alien spacecraft designed for space travel and energy use. The tentacles might function as a unique propulsion system, releasing energy behind the vehicle. 
Regarding alien travel methods, possibilities include rockets powered by nuclear fusion or electron beams. Some speculate that Apollo 8 might have captured traces of electron propulsion left behind by an advanced alien civilization. Hypercomputation is a concept in the world of computation that goes beyond the capabilities of Turing machines, the traditional models of computation. While Turing machines are limited in what they can compute, hypercomputers can perform computations that Turing machines cannot. The Church-Turing thesis tells us that any function a mathematician can compute using simple algorithms and a pen and paper can also be computed by a Turing machine. Hypercomputers challenge this thesis by computing functions that are beyond the reach of Turing machines. One way to understand hypercomputation is to think about it as the ability to solve problems that are considered unsolvable by traditional computational methods. These problems can be quite complex and are often related to mathematical concepts like the halting problem and piano arithmetic. Hypercomputing can take various forms, from theoretical models like Turing's oracle machines to more practical but still speculative systems. Some of these systems involve real-world computers with extraordinary capabilities or unique physical properties. For instance, certain fuzzy logic-based machines can accidentally solve problems that are traditionally deemed unsolvable. In some cases, hypercomputation requires the ability to perform an infinite number of computational steps in finite time, a concept known as a supertask. This is different from traditional computation, which always requires finite resources. Interestingly, some proposals for hypercomputation involve utilizing closed time-like curves, CTCs, which are related to time travel. However, even with CTCs, hypercomputation would still face challenges related to storage and physical feasibility. Quantum mechanics also comes into play in the discussion of hypercomputation. Some believe that a quantum mechanical system using an infinite superposition of states could compute functions that are otherwise non-computable. However, this remains a topic of speculation and debate. Finally, there are systems that are eventually correct, but can take an incredibly long time to arrive at the correct answer. These systems may frequently output incorrect results before eventually converging to the right solution. It's important to note that hypercomputation is a controversial topic, with some experts considering it more of a theoretical concept than a practical reality. Nevertheless, it raises fascinating questions about the limits and possibilities of computation beyond the scope of traditional computing. Hyperobjects are a concept used to describe things that are so vast in time and space that they go beyond the usual boundaries of our understanding. Examples include global warming, styrofoam, and radioactive plutonium. There are five key characteristics of hyperobjects. 1. Viscous. Hyperobjects stick to and affect everything they come into contact with, making it hard to resist their influence. 2. Molten. They are so massive that they challenge our perception of fixed and consistent space and time. 3. Non-local. Hyperobjects are distributed across time and space to such an extent that we can't fully grasp their totality in any one place. For example, global warming impacts weather conditions like tornadoes, but we experience these effects locally without fully understanding the global phenomenon. 4. Phased. Hyperobjects exist in a higher dimensional space, making them appear differently to observers with a multidimensional perspective. 5. Interobjective. Hyperobjects emerge from interactions between multiple objects, leaving behind imprints or footprints on other entities. For instance, global warming results from interactions between the sun, fossil fuels, and carbon dioxide, but we perceive it through indicators like temperature changes and emissions. Hyperobjects become particularly relevant in times of ecological crisis, raising awareness of the environmental challenges we face. They have the potential to endure beyond shifts in cultural values and may even hold a spiritual significance due to their impact on our world. Critics argue that the concept of hyperobjects is vague and all-encompassing, making it difficult to define clearly. Nevertheless, it has found resonance in various fields, including art, literature, and philosophy, as a way to grapple with the complexities of our interconnected world. 
In Antarctica, something puzzling is happening in the world of particle physics. Ultra-high energy particles have been detected three times since 2016, shooting up through the ice, and they don't behave like any known particles. These particles are believed to be ultra-high energy neutrinos, which are usually incredibly faint, and pass through Earth without interacting with matter. But these mystery particles are different. They have a higher chance of colliding with other particles as they pass through. What's intriguing is that the odds of ultra-high energy neutrinos passing through Earth without being stopped are extremely low. It's like winning the lottery multiple times and that's what makes these detections so surprising. Scientists have a good understanding of the cosmic neutrino flux, which includes high energy neutrinos originating from cosmic rays interacting with the cosmic microwave background, the afterglow of the Big Bang. Both the Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna, ANITA, and the Ice Cube experiment have measured this flux and found that it doesn't produce enough high-energy neutrinos to explain the observations. One possible explanation was cosmic accelerators in space, sometimes called neutrino guns, which could be firing intense neutrino bullets toward Earth. However, recent research from the Ice Cube team has cast doubt on this explanation. They looked for events matching the ANITA detections in their data, but found none, severely limiting the possibilities involving cosmic accelerators. The mystery particles defy the standard model of particle physics, and researchers are now considering various possibilities, including a fourth species of neutrino outside the standard model, or different types of dark matter. However, there's still no clear answer, and scientists are waiting for the next generation of neutrino detectors to shed more light on this peculiar phenomenon.